Well, I saw Madame Webb. And let me tell you, I have thoughts. Many and negative. It might not be the worst movie of all time or anything, but it's also really not good. Let's get into it. In 2003, orphaned paramedic Cassandra Webb drowns and is functionally dead for three minutes while on the job before being resuscitated. Afterwards, due to a most fascinating origin which I will get into momentarily, she begins to experience visions of the near future while running into three young women who are each connected to her. Now, Cassandra has to keep the four of them one step ahead of the man hunting them down, who possesses powers even greater than her own. I like to think I'm a pretty positive fellow, and I always like to start with the good things about movies. So let's do that, shall we? Mm, uh, uh, well, I like that it was short. It's not even two hours long, and that's counting credits. One joke did actually make me chuckle. The visual effects are fine. There's a cat in this movie. I like cats. Okay, that's enough reaching for one night. It's dissing time. Firstly, the first five to ten minutes of this movie are just impressively absurd. I mean, we have not just broken suspension of disbelief, we have broken all of the suspensions. So, this film begins in an extended flashback to 1973, 30 years before the main movie begins. Sandra Webb's mother is in Peru, as we perfectly well know. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. That line isn't actually in the movie. I suspect someone took it out after they saw the internet reaction to it. So, that shows some nice awareness on somebody's part. Not enough awareness to just take the movie out entirely, though. This line... Oh yeah, you almost ran me over. Also wasn't in the final cut, if I remember correctly. Although it's hard to say if that was because they realized how annoying it was, or if it was cut out for the myriad of other reasons why things in the trailer don't get shown in the film. At any rate, Mother Webb, who is heavily pregnant at the time, is betrayed by the villain, Ezekiel Sims, who I understand is not actually a supervillain in the comics and has no real relation to the Madame Webb character. So why name this character after the comic book character? Never mind, it's Sony. So Ezekiel wants this rare spider with healing properties, and I guess he doesn't want anyone else to have it either. So he kills all the other members of the expedition and fatally wounds Mother Webb, and then runs away with the spider. Then, and I swear I'm not making this up, Sandra's mother is taken into the treetops by the clan of Peruvian spider people. They are able to save the baby but not her, and in the process the baby is bitten by another one of these spiders. And somehow they get the baby back to New York. You know what? I want to know that. I want that movie about how a magical clan of Peruvian spider people brought a baby to Manhattan. Three Peruvian spider people and a baby. Give us the Madame Web prequel we all want and deserve, Sony people. You cowards. Moving on. There are so many issues with this film, but the two biggest ones are the villain in particular and the characters not counting him. For a start, Ezekiel has this dark-toned version of a Spider-Man suit, which is a wee bit confusing because Spider-Man hasn't even been born by this point. So why does he have a Spider-Man suit? Is he the first Spider-Man in this universe canonically? Maybe that's why J. Jonah Jameson decides that Spider-Man's a villain. It's really weird. The suit itself is not terrible, but... Again, its existence is quite puzzling. I'd say it's not the most thought-out decision of this film, but it quite honestly might be. Then there is the motivation of the villain. He breaks bad at the start for reasons. Now, here's his motivation for hunting down the three spider teenagers. Visions of them stealing his spider, yes, he keeps the spider, and 
they kill him in about 10 to 20 years. And so he eventually manages to track them down in the present day of 2003 and begins trying to kill them now so they don't kill them in the future. Whereas the Madam Web character sees the future and is also able to magically split herself into multiple versions of herself for reasons, he only seems to be able to see the future in this specific dream he keeps having of them stealing his spider and killing him. Except for that time he kind of has a telepathic talk with Madam Web. Yeah, the powers here are not really clearly set up and defined. And you might wonder, how does this bad guy get stopped? Because it's sort of set up that he needs to be bit by the spider regularly in order to not age. One might imagine that his actions lead to them actually stealing a spider, or killing the spider, thus killing him. But, if you thought that, you wouldn't be the writers of Gods of Egypt. No, he dies when the P of a giant Pepsi sign falls on him. Again, not joking. Then there are the other characters. Because Sony, this movie introduces not just the titular character, but three other spider people. Actually, scratch that, because the other three are just teenagers with no powers, suits, or abilities, and yes, they only use them in visions. Because we are dealing with four new heroic characters, bold choice there, Sony. There's very little time to develop any of them. The Dakota Johnson character, M Madam Webb, gets the most screen time, but about zero actual character development, like all of the heroic characters. There are pieces of what might have been a character arc once upon a time, dealing with her having issues due to feeling neglected and abandoned by her mother, but her issues with her mum aren't really established until they have been resolved. Of the three spider teenagers, who I suppose are really just teenagers, two get assigned exactly one character trait, and the third doesn't even get that. One is a rebel whose personality is that she is a rebel, and the other is a rule follower whose personality is that she is a rule follower. Finally, there are minor issues, which are not as significant, but are still irksome. The bad guy has this tech woman, who I don't even think is named, and is solely there to help him find the girls, and might as well not be there. We completely skip over the Dakota Johnson character's training scenes, because Sony. The first time we are introduced to the tribe of Peruvian spider people, there are a lot of them. And when the Dakota Johnson's character goes to Peru for five minutes, there's only one guy left. Also, in the opening scenes, they had cruel makeup and stuff, and now the, the remaining guy just looks like an ordinary New Yorker in Peru, in an underground cave in the middle of the forest in Peru. Very odd. Perhaps this movie's makeup team quit halfway through production. The editing is also very mixed. The way it shows Madame Webb's powers is very good, because it is clear how disorienting they are for her at first, and it gets smoother as she gets better at it, which is clever. But the way the film keeps track of time is wonky. Sometimes it feels like a week has passed when it has, sometimes it feels like a week has passed when it hasn't, and sometimes it doesn't feel like a week has passed when a week has passed. And finally, we have to talk about the line, with responsibility comes great power. Yes, it is in the movie. Yes, it is completely antithetical to the actual line. I don't know why they don't have Ben Parker say the line to the kids, that would have made more sense. Yes, Ben Parker is in the movie, and yes, we do see the birth of Peter Parker. This is still technically a Spider-Man-less Spider-Man movie, though. But, you know, he's a baby. Oh, and there is some lecturing. We get environmentalist lecturing, we get immigration lecturing. You know, just what I want in my Spider-Man-less Spider-Man movie. There are a lot of issues, but I'm briefly going to talk about how to fix this film, because there are elements in this work that could have been salvageable. Firstly, this is not a Valentine's Day movie, this is a Mother's Day movie. 
You remove two of the teenage girls and instantly have room for character development. You also kick out the um, tech girl for um, Ezekiel and just have him do that stuff. There are a few scenes of the Dakota Johnson character being a paramedic. Those get cut because they are kind of pointless. A theme of this movie, really. She doesn't actually use her skills in the film as a paramedic, and in fact is the one getting medical attention by others. And all of the Parker stuff gets cut as well. I like Adam Scott, but that stuff was just weird, and just put in for the professional reactors. The villain dies because of his spider getting taken away from him, or killed, because he tries to kill the remaining teenage girl for stealing his spider in the future, so that will actually resemble something like mildly intelligent writing. And this becomes a movie where the Madame Web character has to become the mother she never got in her own life. This kind of happens in the theatrical movie, but again, due to the multiple characters who really don't need to be there, so many characters who don't really need to be there, it gets kind of overshadowed. So this becomes a nice, wholesome, average movie that would do just fine at the box office, probably. But unfortunately, it would never be made by Sony or otherwise Hollywood people. I am going to be perfectly honest with you. I liked Venom. I thought it was fun. I liked Tom Hardy, and I think he did a pretty good job as um, Venom and Eddie Brock. However, this is getting real old, Sony. Venom 2 was, by all accounts, quite meh. Morbius was. Well, Morbius. And for some inconceivable reason, the wheel keeps turning. And Sony keeps making Spider-Man-less Spider-Man movies. This is actually shaping up to be the year of the Spider-Man-less Spider-Man movies, with both a Craven the Hunter film and Venom 3, scheduled to come out later this year. Pixar has, well, had a motto. Be wrong as fast as you can. Sony seems to be trying a slightly different approach. Be wrong as slow as you can. Will this movie break even? Unlikely, but possible. It's not as horrible as people are saying. And my feature was fuller than I've seen it in the last year. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but it's a good thing for Madam Web. All in all, Madam Web is, in my opinion, a movie that should not have been made. Another botched Spider Manless Spider Man movie, although, like a lot of films these days, there are potences of something with potential, but that potential is gone. Lost. All that is left is Madam Web. Thanks for watching, and I will be back with my review of Dune Part 2, which will almost certainly be better than Madam Web. But with Hollywood, only one thing is certain. The Spider-Man and the Spider-Man movies will continue until morale improves.